So the FAMEX data is available online. You'll find this in the either the lecture one folder or in the data file available to you on LMS, either in the lab or lectures. And you can read this fairly easily. So the way R works is to be able to read data, there are various ways of doing this. A read table is a nice way of reading data. There is a text file here, dot text here. So I've got in my uh, area the data is in the folder data, and it's called farmx.txt. There's two things here that we need to be careful of. The data contains headers. In other words, it actually contains names of the variables I've got, names of the columns. And the other thing is any string variables, something that might be, for example, I might say a variable in my data may be sex, and that'll be male and female. And those are read as what's called factors, and we'll see what that means afterwards. Otherwise, uh, R will read them as strings, and that's not good to us. We want them to be factors. We want, don't want this to be just strings that don't might mean much. We want this to represent male and female. So we make this also equal to true. So then the linear model is fitted by this command lm. So this is association, as you will see. So you would see in the labs and in the material I put out there, there's a whole uh, lecture materials and uh, notes on R. I'll go through that in a second. When this is association, so farmax, this object becomes what is being read over here. So my data file is stored in the variable farmax. And then this is the linear object that comes from my linear model. So this is various things in there we'll, we'll, we'll actually look at afterwards and investigate and interrogate. But lm is the linear model command. It's saying sales is a function of promote. So sales is going to be a linear straight line equation with promote. And it's based on the data that's farmax. So data here, farmax contains my variable. So if I can go quickly to my R, and see if I can get this working for me. Let me see if I can find my data file here. There's Farmex over there. So let me set my session to choose the directory. So I can say farmx becomes read or stable. Farmx dot text and uh, it was true. Oh, it doesn't have farmx. I'm in the wrong file. So let me go back here to a directory and it's going to be like slides data that's what I want so I can read my data if I take a look at this so you can see I've got 50 locations there and it's got three variables region which is where this store is located Promote, which is the expenses that promote, and sales. So that's my header. These are the names of the variables. I can look at a summary of this. Summary of Farmax. So it gives me... The region doesn't make any sense because this is just an identifier. But promotional here, I've got the minimum spend is 77%. The maximum is 117%. The minimum sales is 81%. The maximum sales is 119%, and I would the mean, median, and all those kinds of things there, there as well. And I can do more of this as we go through. We'll take a look at more of these ideas. But if I take a look at something like names of my variable here, farmx, it tells me what the names are, region, promote, and sales. So those kinds of investigations I can do as well. Let's get back to this. So there is my model. Now, I can look at a summary of the farmx.lm. So let's go back to R again, <coughs> and here I'm going to fit that particular model here. So I'm going to say far max dot 
dot lm is equal to lm and I've got sales versus promote and my data is equal to farmx. So if I take a look at names of my farmx.lm, it'll tell me what's stored there. I've got coefficients, residuals, effects, all these kinds of things. We'll access each of these as we go through here. For example, if I take a look at Farmax of LM dollar will access a variable underneath that model, the particular object. So if I take a look at something like uh, coefficients, it tells me coefficients are 25.12 and 0.76. And if I take a look at the summary of this, summary Farmax dot LM, it gives me the full output as I have in my R slides. And it gives me the coefficient intercept is 25.12, which is the same as what I had here, and promote is 0.76, the same as I, what I had over here. So I can ext extract all those things from my R output. So let me take a look at this in detail. The first thing is that all I've got here in the output is I've used the summary of command, summary of farmx.lm. So all any models that you fit and you save them as objects like I've got over here, you can always do a summary of those, you can always do a plot of those, these are the basic things you can do with our objects, we'll see them as we go through. The first thing it gives you in the output is what was actually done, fitted here, so the call is that I put sales here as the linear model for promote, but data was farmax, it tells me what formula I used in the, mo the model here. It tells me some things about residuals here, we'll get to that later on. But the main important thing here is it gives me the coefficients of the model. So intercept is 25.1264, promote is 0.7623. That means my equation here says that sales equals 25.1264 plus 0.7623 times promote. Now this is my fitted equation. Sales isn't exactly equal to this particular equation because I've got some random variation around that. So you usually put a head over there saying this is fitted values or this is the values my equation tells me from uh, the model. The other things we get over here is what's called the standard error. So this is in some way a measure of how much uh, variation I'm getting in my intercept. Now, there's, there's also going to be error here because the data itself contains some variation. So this is some idea of variation over here. And the other thing you get here is this P thing. That's called a P value. For those who have done earlier tests, you'll know what this means. I won't go through the details here, but the idea is that you can fit a model of this kind to any data. That doesn't necessarily mean that the model is going to be what we call significant. In other words, if I've got data that looks like this, for example, You can fit a straight line there. It's a matter of saying, well, is there some relationship between X and Y that is meaningful at all? Or is it just going to be a straight line here? In other words, is it actually Y equals something like A plus BX? Or is it Y equals simply A? Are these things going to be different over here? And we test for that by, by looking at this idea called p-value. And usually the idea is, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, this is arbitrary, and we'll discuss this as we go through a tron. It's a 5% significance level, that's what it's called. Then we say that the regression, then the, that the coefficient is significant, different from 0. So it's a matter of saying, is this a actually 0? Sorry, the b. Is the b actually 0? That's what we have as the difference between these two models. Or is it not 0? And I tested by saying, well, I can find myself, I can quantify this difference here by this p-value idea. If the p-value is small, then we say it's unlikely that the b is not zero. So I'm starting by saying b is not zero. If p-value is small, it says, well, it's unlikely that b is actually equal to zero. So in other words, more likely b is zero. So a small p-value means 
Essentially, if I'm, I'm a bit more formal here, I'm going to state two hypotheses. My hypothesis here to start off is saying that V actually is equal to zero. In other words, there is no relationship between my X and Y, and this one, H1, my alternative says B isn't equal to zero. And the p-value helps me decide between these things. So, if the p-value is small, I say, well, there's evidence against H0, and actually will tend towards accept, well, I wouldn't say accepting, but I'll tend towards saying the evidence supports B, B0, B1, B0 equal to zero. Evidence supports H1. So, that's how this really works. We'll understand this as we go through and, and do more of the analysis. But the p-value helps us decide if the model has any significant variables in there. If this p-value was large, I would say, well, I can actually fit a model without promote. It'll be just as good. In other words, I'll get a straight line this way. In other words, promote doesn't help me explain the variation in sales. That's the idea here. Promote doesn't help me explain variation in sales. So, I will, as I say, go through and understand this more in more detail. But the symbols here are essentially going to be the difference between my straight line and the values in the data. So, if I take a look at a regression that's a bit more like the sales and the promote we're going to get over here. So, my regression between, say, promote and sales will look something like this. That's my straight line. My data, of course, will be around that straight line. So, the residuals are the difference between my straight line and the data value here. It's always going to be the data value minus the straight line value. So, here the residual is positive because the data value is above the line, and here the residual is negative because the data value is below the line. So the data value minus the straight line value. So we're saying here the minimum residual is about negative 17 or so, and the largest is 17 or so. So minimum will be 17 below the line, and the largest is about 17 above the line. I don't know where the mean and median here as well, all these kinds of things. The other thing here is the residual standard error is about 7. This is a measure of uh, how well my model fits. The smaller this is, the better. The residual standard error, the smaller, the better. It's a measure, in fact, of uh, the, the variation I'm seeing. So this is actually a measure. Remember, we had my error terms were error terms were normal with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. So this here is actually a measure of my sigma. So I call this sigma hat again. This is an estimate sigma. My R squared, or, or what we call correlation squared here, so the multiple correlation squared is 0.45. Its square root gives me correlation. The adjusted R squared is a little bit different. This adjusts for variables I fit. The more variables I fit, the, the, the more this gets adjusted. In other words, if I fit more variables, then of course I'll be able to always uh, do something in the regression, even though the variables might not be significant. So this actually penalizes for the number of variables fitted in some way. And we'll discuss it as we go through later on. I'll ignore the rest of this for the moment. So very quickly, I've said these things in the slides here. Then the photo field equation is sales is 25.1264 times, then 0.7623 times promote here. What it means is, if Pharmax spends nothing in promotions, if this is zero, then my sales are 25% of the competitors' sales. For every percent increase in promotion, if I increase it by 1% or 1, then my sales increases by 0.76% of that of my competitor. And if I spend the same as my competitor, if I spend 100%, if promote is 100%, then my sales becomes 101%. In other words, I'm not doing so badly, because if I spend the same as my competitor, I'm getting a little more sales than he or the competitor is getting here. Diagnostics here, well, the model is quite good in one sense, because I've got my correlation is 66% or 66.66 here. Uh, in other words, what it's telling is, so R squared is 0.4415. It tells me 44% of the variation in the data is explained by my uh, regression. In other words, 44% of the variation in sales is explained by my promotion expenses here. 
But this isn't all we look at here. And so far, by looking at p-values and making sure that I've got a model that's significant, excuse me, doesn't help me at all, I have still got to take a look at model diagnostics and verify the assumptions. Now, there are four assumptions we had here. I'll stop here. We'll look at them in the last lecture. Thank you. Bye.